Hi, Bob Greeny here, volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. After my presentation in Sochi, uh, one Vladislav Zhigalov, the man who studied strange radiation tracks from a number of Alexander Parkamov reactors, uh, thought that some of the things that I was saying were um, very similar to uh, something that had been studied uh, in a Russian uh, laboratory and he sent me the link and I posted it on the uh, Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project's Facebook uh, site and other channels um, on October the 9th 2018 and this paper or rather this uh, research, research that was referring to I will show you now. So the research that he was linking to was from 2008 and uh, it was done by the National Research Nuclear University, MEPHL. And it was features and of the periodic discharge in the fluid flow and specifics of its impact on electrode material. Okay, so it's a very interesting uh, paper. And uh, you have these discharges and so forth. And they found these wonderful toroidal structures. Uh, now, um. I've discussed these before, they've been discussed on the forums uh, since this posting and what I uh, like to call these are uh, dark evos and the interesting thing that is uh, always confused me uh, why no one else has picked up on this, I, I actually call these uh, black donuts rather than black holes because you have this incredibly bright plasma behind and yet this is really dark how is that possible? Um, you know, if this is electrons or something else, you know, how is that possible? Could it be absorbing the light? Delaying the light? Turning the light? You know, why is this not more curious to people? I don't know. Here's another toroidal structure coming out of one of these discharges. And yet another strange structure. This one here. You've got the, the pinch down over here, but this is this toroidal sort of corpuscle, as Tesla might say in his uh, article many years ago. Uh, if he observed similar things, that would have been interesting. But anyway, it, and, and it has this trail of stuff behind it. You've got a plasma pinch behind here with all this bright illumination, and it's dark. It's like a black donut. Anyway, so uh, here's another one, you see? The black donut with the plasma, and it's literally, why is there no light getting through this thing? <laughs> there's a black donut, and there's an extremely large uh, plasma pinch behind it. Why is the light not going through that? Uh, and so forth. So, um, and you've got luminous zones, and, and this is a, a, a paired luminous object and so forth. So this is really fascinating. It's it's three pages long and of course you get these uh, what appear to be two line tracks and what they call discontinuous tracks on the steel sample um, and uh, here are the sort of samples uh, sort of tracks we saw all over the indium foil uh, from Amasa where you have the ring with the spot in the middle and they're calling these a uh, system of zones of superheated metal uh, in the formation of a vortex. This looks very much like the structures you saw on um, uh, Matsumoto from the early 1990s. There's some random other structures here. And they're, they're, they're kind of like the sort of uh, quanta that you get uh, from this uh, uh, technology. Uh, and it's well worth having a look at some of these filamentary structures and so forth. Anyway, uh, in the last page here, they're, you know, they've got some tracks on x-rays here, and some material here, and um, what they're saying is here, with lighter elements like beryllium, uh, there, there wasn't too much change, but they're saying, uh, uh, in particular light element, uh, in samples of light metals, in particular beryllium, the composition of the sample remains almost unchanged after the treatment. Uh, <laughs> this is a bad translation here, prostate cancer, but it's a, uh, of this process. In the samples of heavier metals, copper and tungsten, a change in the composition observed, similar to those observed in early experiments. Um, copper samples showed an increase of uh, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, sodium, potassium, calcium, sulfur, chlorine, um, and so forth. And so um, this is kind of in line with the sort of uh, 
uh, finding a, uh, some midway between light elements uh, with the hydrogen in the water and uh, the heavier elements. Anyway, so this uh, was shared, as I said, uh, on the October the 9th, uh, 2018. Thank you to Vladislav Zhigalov for put, putting this my way. But today, Dr. Felix Schulgman uh, from Switzerland, who's been very interested in the work that I have conducted uh, in uh, Japan most recently, actually found this paper and it was uh, published fairly recently, I think. Um, where is it? Yeah, 2019, I think it, it was published. Um, uh, Anyway, it was received actually on June the 29th, and this is, um, where is it? This is uh, in final form, and uh, it was given on October the 23rd, so this is interesting. This is just a few weeks after the Sochi presentation, and this is essentially based on work done in 2008. Uh, it's interesting that this happened to be coming around uh, 2018 but anyway may, it took a, obviously there's a lot of work being done here but video recording of long-lived plasmoids near objects exposed to remote and direct effects of high current pinch discharges and it's uh, Bogdanovich, uh, Bogdanovich and uh, Volkov Len Nesterovich um, but uh, there's some extremely interesting things that I would like to share with you in this paper and I'll just cut to them so first off, uh, the apparatus, which you can check out uh, in the paper, is quite similar to uh, the uh, system by Suhas Ralkar. Um, voltages, cycles are different, but essentially you've got a fluid and a discharge and a, a frequency and so forth going on, and uh, um, you've got pulsed uh, plasma going onto uh, a target. There's a lot of really inter interesting things to talk about in this, but this is really, for me, the big win. Recording of long-lived plasma formations. The study of the surface of metallic electrodes that were exposed to this process discovered the presence of luminous spot areas on the surface whose illumination has a fairly long duration. Over two days! <laughs> Over two days! So, Ed Lewis talking about, um, you know, when you get what he called uh, condensed plasmoids or so forth uh, in this state, uh, it, it actually persists after the processing. You know, this kind of supports that. And uh, he's saying constant observation of uh, the surfaces both exposed to this process and located in the zone directly adjacent to the discharge as well as the, uh, the ones direct in direct contact with such surfaces was completed, which could confirm the assumption about the existence of stable particles responsible for long-term glow plasma formation at the micro and macro levels. In order to clarify the nature of the observed phenomena and the dynamics of the processes of appearance in luminous zones, uh, the analysis of the obtained data showed the presence of luminous objects moving along the surface, along the surface, the shape of the objects is presumably toroidal, and the axis of the toroid is parallel to the surface. There are reasons to consider them rotating relative to the axis. The toroids are inhomogeneous uh, along the azimuth, as evidenced by the movement of the darkened sector from left to right and vice versa, which most likely corresponds to the, uh, corresponds to the rotation of the toroid around its own axis, figure 6. This is under a microscope. It's the luminous object under the microscope. The suggestion is it's moving in this direction. You've got dark area and so on. So there's a luminous toroidal object that performs translational and rotational motion over the surface of the electrode. Have a look. Uh, from left to right, which in most likely corresponds to the rotor. They have a size of 50 micrometers. This is the same kind of quanta that we've observed and that Matsumoto have observed. They tend to form quanta. 50 microns is one of the quanta and a speed of more than 10 micrometers per second. The time of their stay in the field of view of the microscope with a video camera is a few tens of seconds. The plasmoid emission color is green, which may indicate blah, blah, blah. So 
they're saying that for a couple of days after, that there are things on the surface of the metal that uh, look like they're toroidal, and they kind of move around with the, the toroid on the metal and, and, and moving left and right. This looks like the kind of traces that Matsumoto saw in his x-rays and the kind of traces that we saw on the indium foil uh, treated with the Amasa uh, um, vibration process. Now up here, this is what uh, Felix was really interested in showing me, is that the stream of electrons from the dielectric surface and complex object of type luminous rings that is formed by it rotating around its own common axis and rolling on the surface. This is a cluster of these structures in a kind of a group, yeah? Uh, they describe elsewhere in the previous article on the web that's like fractal structures. And they roll along the surface! <laughs> Seriously! <laughs> that's what it says! <laughs> and, you know... They didn't know that I was going to go to uh, Japan. I didn't know about this paper. You know, this is published in after I gave my Sochi presentation. What is going on? <laughs> so uh, let's have a read a bit more here. Uh... A stream of particles, presumably electrons, which causes air to glow, a similar pattern is observed after the emission of electrons from the electron source or the injector through the foil, is emitted from the surface. After 10 to 20 seconds, this stream is formed into a set of several rings, five or six, of the same diameter, which rotate around both their own uh, and common axis parallel to the plane horizontal. Again, it's saying it rolls across the surface. The whole system begins to rotate around a common axis and moves in a horizontal plane. Then it transforms into a, a, an electronic tornado which rotates around the vertical axis and is almost identical uh, in its uh, uh, shape and size to the pinches in the discharge. The height is a few millimeters, not more than 10. Uh, this tornado is removed from the uh, camera and disappears. The whole process lasts about one minute from start to finish. The transverse size of the rotating tornado is not more than five millimeters. And so they have video recordings of these things. I really, really want to see these video recordings. I don't want to go through everything in this paper, but here we go. The existence of uh, quasi-stationary, although relatively short-lived, luminous plasmoids, a spherical and linear configuration was theoretically justified by the authors and their colleagues in the framework of the general relativity in uh, with the involvement of the concepts of microgravity and time-space distortion. It was shown that in steady state, that in principle, it is possible uh, at the corresponding concentration of ions and the substance in the plasmoid volume, uh, in particular at the parameters of pinch discharges in the conducted experiments. So I'm not reading this very well, but I had to come into the office and just do this. I'm meant to be taking time off. Uh, but really, you seriously must read through this. Uh, there's a couple other bits I want to grab. In accordance with modern concepts, uh, electrons can form Cooper pairs in the field of a, a, a monopole and uh, rotate uh, tending towards it, but at the same time losing energy in the uh, zone near it. A halo of electrons and atoms of ionized air can be formed around the monopole. The total magnetic field, together with the plume field, can be interpreted as a dipole field. So, you know, it's a bit like the structure that I shared at Sochi. Um, you've got something in the middle where everything's going. Uh, it's got some intense gravity in there. Um, that causes some spinning, things going in towards it. But as things spray out, uh, it can be interpreted as a dipole. Um, uh, electrons can exist stably, including those in the quantum state at ultra-low temperatures and form structures identical to those shown in figure 7. Rotation around the common axis uh, resembles the dynamics of electrons in Earth's magnetic field. Analysis of the attained results clearly indicates such properties of the observed objects and phenomena as uh, the presence of superfluidity, ability to form objects with clearly fixed dimensions, and rotation of objects as a whole uh, in separate parts. Uh, in the magnetic monopoles... So anyway, what, what I can say is you really should read this. Uh, it was funded uh, uh, by the Russian Science Foundation and the uh, National Research Nuclear University, uh, MEPHI, uh, and 
if we go back here, the original article from 2008 uh, that discusses this uh, says that you can form the many of the sort of standard strange radiation tracks, uh, these kind of like uh, double line ones, uh, you see, where is it, up here, the, these like splodges and the kind of dotties and the, the double line ones and they uh, observe a uh, transmutation. If you've got heavy elements there, you tend to get uh, more transmutation to lighter elements. And I guess this is in the presence of lighter elements. So, um, and the beauty of this uh, particular paper is that it was captured on video. And the other thing I will say is, just imagine you had some of these long-lived luminous objects okay whatever they are and you had a technology that was able to create a lot of these at a large scale uh, you could potentially because basically this is cold the metal's cold it's done its process and it's coming out two days later you've got this thing going on could this explain why john hutchison had a piece of aluminium and the piece of aluminium is glowing like it's extremely extremely hot when in fact it's not hot at all and it's just these glowing plasmoids that give out a lot of light, but there's not a lot of heat going on. And could this structure here, here be a similar sort of structure that left the weird mark in Matsumoto's work in 1992-93 and in the Amasa work? Certainly, some of the traces observed in the early part of this work uh, that was published in 2008 look a lot like what we observed uh, uh, in our initial investigations into Amaz's uh, ash, uh, particularly the uh, indium foil placed into his reactor. So there is a huge, huge uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, potential correlation between the work at uh, this Russian institution uh, and things that we've been observing of late. I would really, really love to gain access to these videos. Um, so please, if there's any web ferrets out there, see if you can find the videos that are associated with this published paper. Thank you very much for your time. I'll see you in the next video.